Now the example I want to show you has a few twists compared to the basic one you started before. I'm going to introduce some new gene symbols to you, and I want to show you why it's really important to read the whole question and make sure you don't take anything for granted. Hopefully you had a chance to try this already. Now in this first example, and let me just pull up my pen here. Oops, that's not the pen. There we go. I want you to notice that I've changed this label right here, and that's going to change the way the question works. You have to read these and interpret properly, so I, I do reserve the right to change these uh, to make the question um, test your, your ability to, to synthesize. But before I get into that, I want to talk about this gene symbol right here. OC is exactly the same thing as O minus. What we've done is change the nucleotide sequence inside of the operator. And remember that the gene sequence in the operator is what allows the repressor protein to bind. The letter C stands for constitutive. Constitutive. And that just simply means always on, constantly on. So keep that in mind when you see the OC mutation. And what I'm saying basically is that although we have a normally a normal repressor protein here, we're not able to bind onto that OC region because the nucleotide sequence there no longer conforms to the cells or to the, to the uh, the amino acids in the repressor protein. Remember the repressor protein will feel inside the major groove and recognize certain nucleotide sequences. If I change those sequences, it can't bind, even though it's a perfectly good repressor protein. Now to further parse this a little bit, we've got a broken Y, and so we'll never be able to make the permease in these conditions. But can we make the beta-galactosidase? Well, it turns out that we do have a perfectly good beta-galactosidase there, so we'll give it a plus sign. We'll give it a plus sign there, and we'll give it a plus sign on there. So even when lactose is absent, there's no way to turn it off, and that's why I put a plus sign in this region right here. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that when glucose is present, you don't make as much cap-camp complex. And so therefore, we're going to have just a basic amount of transcription occurring in translation for the beta-galactosidase. So under all circumstances where glucose is present, we'll leave that as a single plus. But if glucose is absent, that means that the cyclic AMP is going to be elevated, because remember the uh, adenyl cyclase enzyme that makes the AT, uh, this CAMP is going to be uh, inhibited when, um, in the presence of glucose. But in the absence of glucose, it's going to be able to make lots of cyclic AMP, and that's going to bind to make the CAP-CAMP complex, and that's positive regulation in the operon. So we get extra transcription occurring there. So that's the first line. Now, if we look at the second line, it's sort of a giveaway, a nice good one, easy to, for you to do. I've got a defective promoter, and if the promoter is defective, no RNA polymerase can bind under any circumstances. And this is a cis-acting effect, which means that it affects all of the different parts of the operon that are attached to it. Uh, you'll see in the next example, when I have a mirozygote, that the defective promoter will only affect the uh, operon that's attached to it, that's under the control of that promoter. Well, in that case, we just give it minus signs all around, and we are done. Now, here we've got another case here with a perfectly good promoter, a perfectly good operator, a perfectly good repressor protein. But because we have a defective Z, and because of the polar effect, what we're saying here is that the RNA polymerase, is this uh, the, RNA uh, the RNA that you make, not the polymerase, the RNA you make, it's got a 5' prime end here, got a 3' prime end over here, and you've got your start code on here after the Scheindel garno sequence that allows the ribosome to attach and, and tr transcribe. If we have the first reading frame like this, and I'll just put two on my example here, and I'll put a stop code on there, and then you have a few nucleotides, and you have another start code on over here, in a normal effective polycystronic mRNA, that ribosome will latch on at the beginning, make the first protein, and continue on to make the second one. Because the Z is defective right here, let's say it craps out early on, and the ribosome hits a stop code on early on in the reading frame. That, mean, that means that it's not able to go any further, and we're not going to make any product. So 
you would get partial credit if you can say, well, no, I wouldn't make any Z under these circumstances because obviously that part of the reading frame is defective. But you, for full credit, you need to recognize also that the permeates would not be made because that's uh, we're going to assume that the Z minus is a stop codon early on in the reading frame, and that'll prevent the ribosome from getting that far down. For our last example here, we've got a normal promoter, so I didn't give you any freebie there. We've got a good um, I minus or I plus, a repressor protein here, and I've got an O zero uh, O minus. Now I told you before that constitutive opera, um, operator region and a O minus are the same thing, and you will recognize that these two are exactly the same. So, in this case, we just put the same logic as we did for the first line, and that should be all you need to know. Take a look at the next one for an extension of some of these principles.